Hello and thank you for joining us on Vegan Bloomer's channel. My name is Luna Bloomer and I am here with our star vegan who is a very close friend of mine. So let's welcome Sherry. Welcome Sherry. Hi, Hi everybody. Thank you for joining us. Lovely to be here. So let's get started with where you're based, yep. how old you are yep. and just a little bit about yourself. Oh wow. So I live here in Folkestone, um, not very far from Luna, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> across the road. We're practically neighbours. <laughs> um, now I'm getting on for 63, so I'm quite an old lady now. And uh, a little bit about myself is um, I'm semi-retired and I uh, just recently trained as an NLP practitioner so I run a coaching practice and the rest of the time I love my garden really really into gardening I love spending life with my little two sausage dogs Mitzi and Dolly and um, yeah I'm, I'm interested in anything that's to do with nature and keeping the world alive and making it a better place. Sounds wonderful thank you for sharing so let's let's get started about your vegan journey so tell us tell us all about your vegan journey so when when was it that you turned vegan and what was it that inspired you to get there yeah so I I turned vegan about 11 years ago so around about 2010 but prior to that I had been vegetarian since about 1985 or 1986 and um, what first started me on that journey a long 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 time ago was that I attended a mind body and spirit festival and there was a, a stall there I can't even remember who was running the stall but it was introducing um, vegetarianism oh. and it was the first time I'd really thought about it um, I watched a little film which really Im impressed me and took away lots of leaflets and by the time I'd read that was on the Saturday and by the time I'd read them all on the Sunday I decided that me and my daughter were going to be vegetarian so that that was amazing the the so what was the little video that you watched about it was really interesting it had um it had this man he was sat at a big table and then it had a, a maid coming in and she kept bringing him big plates of food so she'd bring him a big plate of say chicken and then a big plate of lamb chops and then a big plate of beef steak and basically while he was eating it the film flashed to what happened to the animals to get them there on oh, the plate, wow. which was quite horrific yeah I can actually imagine. Mm. it was really shocking for me watching it I was just like oh god so that I just thought no I don't want to be part of that I don't want to spend my money on hurting animals so I'm not going to pay anyone else to hurt animals for anymore and um, from then on I decided that I yeah that I would go vegetarian although um, at first I had a few slips I found it very very hard to give up chicken tikka at the Indian <laughs> restaurant that was very hard and I found it quite hard to obviously to give bacon up and um, that's the big one Although in the end, I realised that I liked the smell of bacon more than I liked the taste of bacon. So that was, okay. that was an awakening for me. Uh, and the other thing that I used to eat at first was tin tuna. Uh, but then over maybe six months or so, I knocked those on the head. Um, and then how I came to be vegan was that I'd had a discussion with a friend of mine because I tried being vegan several times, but I always gave in to cheese. Of course, um, cheese, cheese, <laughs> cheese is the hardest thing. Yeah, <laughs> cheese is the hardest thing. And um, so, um, th this friend of mine, Petra, uh, we decided that we would try to go vegan together to give each other a bit of support. And we had a pledge that if either of us um, slipped, that we would both have to watch that film, Earthlings. And neither of us wanted to watch that film at all. <laughs> and so it was a real deterrent because I knew if I, I slipped, then I'd have to make her watch Earthlings with me. And if she slipped, she'd have to make me watch it with her. So that was the thing that kept us going. And then 
before we knew it, we'd been vegan for a year, then we'd been vegan for two years and three years and so on. And so now it's about 11 years. That's amazing that you got to do it like your adventure with somebody. It really helped. Yeah. It really helped because I felt responsible for her. Because that film, I have still never watched Earthlings, although I know that she has. And I was so, um, you know, so, so frightened of watching it. I didn't want, I didn't have those images in my head. I'd read about it and I didn't want to have the images in my head. But more so, I didn't want to impose it on her. Yeah. So it was a good way to do it as a, you know, to have a buddy to do that with. Yeah, that's, well. that's awesome. Yeah, it sounds it. What an amazing story. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> it's been a long one. Yeah, for sure. So mm. I know you said you struggled giving up chicken, chicken tikka. When you went into, now you're vegan, is there anything that you miss that you used to be able to have that you haven't found? Cheese. <laughs> Still. <laughs> I still miss cheese. I've tried lots and lots of vegan cheeses. Um, some of the more expensive ones are quite nice, but I've I've never really found a comparison, you know, like a good vintage cheddar or I like smoked cheese. Um, the applewood cheese is fairly okay. Um, the nourish camembert, I quite like. I think that's a good, that's a good replacement. But I used to love cheese and I've never really found replacement vegan cheeses. So, so what was your favourite cheese when you ate cheese? Would you would you want them to, you know, if there's any producers, manufacturers of cheese listening, what do you, what do we want? <laughs> uh, I I want a really very plain, mature, mature cheddar. That's what I would like. Okay. Yeah. Really tasty one, a good one that will melt to make cheese on toast that isn't like just eating melted plastic on toast so <laughs> you're you're really selling the vegan cheese here <laughs> well for anyone that's new and <laughs> contemplating it i think the thing is you've got to try yeah. different cheeses because it does depend what you like so i've i've got a friend who's very happy with uh, am I allowed to say brand names? Yeah, yeah I am, aren't I? So know, I just yeah. said it. Yeah. Um, she's very happy with Violife, which to me is, I don't see the point of it really. But then <laughs> when she was a cheese eater, like her favourite cheeses were very mild cheese, like um, Gouda and Edam. Yeah. And whereas my cheese that I like are like the really strong cheddars and the strong blue cheeses. So it depends, it depends on your taste, doesn't it? Some yeah. of those vegan cheeses will cut it and some of them won't so it's just subjective so how is it that like when you're craving like a cheese that you used to have how do you get past that what what makes you stop is it still the is it still the little pledge that you did or is it something else that helps you to manage those cravings um the little pledge I mean I don't have that pledge with her anymore but I do, you know, I do know enough about dairy farming and cheese production to know, once again, like I said earlier on, I don't want to be paying people to be cruel to animals on my behalf. So I just I just don't want to be a part of that. And every now and then I do treat myself to one of the expensive vegan cheeses just to get my fix, my little cheese fix. And where, where do you get your expensive cheeses from? I tend to get them, but there's a local maker here that um, that makes cheese, but also I, I tend to usually buy them online. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, but they're, they're expensive. You're paying, I don't know, £8.50 or something for a little round like oh, this. Oh, wow. You know? So, yeah. That is fine. They're kind of special, special. Yeah. Christmas presents yourself. Yeah, well, more than that, but yeah, yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice little treat, yeah, because yeah. they are expensive. That's awesome. So how would you say that veganism has impacted your life? I think I feel good, if I'm honest. I think I feel good knowing that I'm not part of that system, knowing that I'm not, uh, you know, I've worked very, very hard to earn my money. And I like to think that my money is not going into that system. 
um, that that makes me feel better about myself. I think if I now I have the knowledge of what happens to animals in the animal farming industry. Now I have the knowledge. I know I don't want to be part of it, but obviously in the past, I didn't have that knowledge. I had no idea what went on behind the scenes. You know, yes, people talk about it, but unless you really see, for instance, a, a film of what's going on in slaughterhouses and what's going on, you know, with the poor dairy cows and the babies being taken away and everything, unless you really see it, it doesn't really ring true, I don't think. So um, for me to know that I'm not part of that, I think is good for my soul. I think it's um, spiritually, I feel like I'm kind of cleaner and free of that burden. So I'm very happy about that. That's good. Amazing. Yeah. And yeah. have you had any... Um... Have you had any health benefits from going vegan, would you say? I'm not sure that I have particularly. Um, no, not that I've particularly noticed over the years. It wasn't as if I suddenly thought, oh, I feel really healthy. Because I think because I've been vegetarian for such a long time, I was already ahead of the game, if you know yeah. what I mean. Um, because... Um, a lot of like I'm a fat person and you get stereotyped as if you're fat, you know, you're going to have diabetes, you're going to have high cholesterol, you're going to have heart disease and, and all this. And um, and over the years, I've never had that. So I've always put that down to being vegetarian and vegan. The fact that I'm not eating, uh, you know, dead animals, basically. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. So yeah. what is something we we know that you don't like vegan cheeses? What is something <laughs> that you do love to eat that's vegan? Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something that's really funny because people wouldn't say, oh, it's vegan. But I love really having like salads. You know, I just love really mixed up. I've got, I've got one lined up later that's um, going to be salad with um, tofu and garlic mushrooms. Oh, and nice. um, yeah, and I think sometimes people think, oh, if it's vegan, it has to be a special vegan labeled food with the word vegan on it. Yeah. And forget that so many just ordinary foods um, are vegan. Like I, I just went shopping and I was thinking about breakfasts and I was thinking about um, like, you know, light lunch, light breakfast. I thought, oh, yeah, mushrooms on toast. Um grilled tomatoes on toast you know just things like that that are vegan that you kind of don't think oh they're vegan yeah um yeah I don't think we need to always be going out and buying processed food that says vegan on the packet it's just so many things that we can eat you know like pasta with sauces and shepherd's pie made with lentils and you know all, all sorts of kind of ordinary food that we can translate into being vegan but it doesn't have to have a label on it yeah absolutely yeah. you raise a very good point yeah yeah I do think that people do you know I I can say even for myself like when I think vegan I forget about I mean obviously I eat them because I know they're vegan because they're naturally vegan but in my brain it automatically goes to like the meat substitutes and you know things like the cakes and you know all that so it's it's an interesting point to raise so thank I you love, for making us you, aware I love like picky things on the table like just putting putting things out on the table like hummus and olives sun-dried tomatoes salads falafels all of these things make a lovely delicious vegan spread but they wouldn't be called vegan no nice. it's just that is and and a lot of them are really nutritious you know because the um, falafels and the hummus are made with chickpeas so you've got all that nutrition and um and you know nuts salted nuts and oh yeah there's so many lovely foods that you can eat I don't I don't really think you need to miss anything to be honest you know it's like I go sometimes I go out for dinner with friends and we go for a Sunday roast okay and so if we have a Sunday roast I'll have everything 
all the vegetables, all the potatoes, the stuffing, everything, except the meat. Now, when I look at their plates, they have all of that as well, but they have like two slices of meat, you know, two slices of this, whichever animal they're choosing, their chicken or their lamb or their whatever. And they say, oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't have a roast dinner without my chicken. I couldn't have a roast <laughs> dinner without my lamb. And I look and I think, that's probably like one sixth yeah. of your meal there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can't do without two slices of a poor little lamb. Oh, come on. You know, it's like Christmas dinner, isn't it? The most enjoyable thing about Christmas dinner. I don't think it's the chicken. I think it's the roast potatoes and the roast yeah. parsnips and, you know, stuffing balls and cranberry sauce and all of that, which is all completely vegan. Yeah. <laughs> that's so true you know that yeah humans have made a really big thing about you know everything surrounding the meat the meat is the main part of the meal and yeah, yeah. it's it's quite sad yeah. as well you know all the veg is the stuff that's going to fill you up that's the stuff that actually has given you the the nutrients that our bodies need and it's so tasty isn't it yeah it is you know like like when we have a lovely roast dinner you know all those vegetables they all have different tastes and textures and colors it all yep. looks colorful it doesn't look it doesn't look attractive because of the two slices of dark brown or medium brown fibers whatever yep. it is it does, that's not what, what makes it look attractive is it it's, it's all, all the, the rest of it. roast potatoes and the broccoli and the red cabbage and the parsnips and the swede all those lovely colours, that's what makes it exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. You know, often, I expect you have this too, you'll go to stay at a friend's house and they're not veggie or vegan and they get in a panic. They oh, I don't know what to feed you. I don't know what to feed you. <laughs> and I say, well, I'll probably have exactly the same as you, except without the meat bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, which, which can be so simple. So I think sometimes people get frightened of becoming vegan because they think, oh, it means I've got to make lots of special meals and, you know, it's, I'm not going to be able to do it and my nutrition's going to fall apart and all this, that and the other. And I just don't think it's true. I think our bodies are clever enough. If we listen intuitively, if we listen to our bodies, they'll tell us what they need to eat. Yeah, they I really agree. Will. Yeah, I agree 100%. And, you know... And sometimes when people say to me, oh, you're a vegan, what do you eat? And I say, well, there's about 150 vegetables. <laughs> Probably more. <laughs> yeah. There's all these legumes that I can eat, you know, lentils, chickpeas, beans. There's all these grains that I can eat, you know. And you just... I, think, I think often, you know, when, like, you get your basic... So, like, my mum, for example... You know, we would have the same meals over and over again because yeah. my mum was very limited with things that we could eat. And yeah. she wasn't, I think because she wasn't a confident cooker, she didn't ever want to experiment with things like different kinds of vegetables that she wouldn't traditionally have. And yeah. I think that's an issue with a lot of people because they're not exposed to enough. You know, we, we're, we're creatures of habit, aren't we? So we find something we like and we keep making the same thing. And then if we're not careful, we're not going to be able to expand our taste buds and like our horizons in food. So some of these people, I think, aren't even aware, you know, because there's things like quinoa, for example, or polenta or millet, like all these things. And people are like, what is that? Like they've never yeah. heard, they've never heard of it. But there's so yes. many pulses, especially I find people don't know about them and it's like beans as well you know there's so many different kinds of beans like I'm constantly finding new beans that I've never heard of but they're not you know sometimes you have to look for it so yeah it does make sense to me as to why people are scared about it because I think a lot of people aren't exposed enough I think you're right because when, when I was growing up much like you, you described within your family my my mum had her set vegetables that she cooked every week and I'd never had a parsnip until I left home 
because my mum never cooked parsnips. It wasn't part of her thing that she did. Yeah. You know? But then she did other really nice things that I still have like today, like butter beans was something my mum put in our meals a lot. And also peas pudding. We used to have What's peas that? It, it's a yellow split peas, like cooked and mashed. Oh, okay. Yeah. So peas pudding. So it's like you can use peas pudding for lots of things. You can use it as a topping for, you don't have to use ordinary mash for cottage pie all the time. You can use different mashes. Um, yeah, so so mum was good in some ways, but not others. And also when I um, left home, when I was, well, probably when I was 17, 18, I started to mix with the Caribbean community because I lived in Brixton in South London and the African community because I was working in healthcare and there was lots and lots of people, black, black workers working with me. And so I started to try lots of foods that I hadn't tried before. Awesome. So, you know, even in those days to find a sweet potato was a rarity. And and to, in fact, when I came down here to live on the South Kent coast from London, I was shocked that I couldn't find my vegetables anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, there was nowhere to buy a plant in or nowhere yeah. to buy, you know, to buy all those things that I'd been just buying naturally up in London. And even now it's not easy to find no. I mean I love fried planting I know where I can get it now so I have it fairly often um cassava I love cassava um I've never heard of that what is that, there is you that vegetable? Are. it's a root vegetable oh, okay it's um yeah it's a bit like yam but it has okay. a different texture and a different flavor well I like yam but um, I've never had yam I'm going to have to cook you all this yes, stuff. Yes, we will. <laughs> I'm going to have to cook you all this stuff. We'll all but, have but, a, we'll but have you, you, cherries. <laughs> but you make the point. You make the point, don't you? Which is that there's so many different vegetables to eat, but we get stuck in our little rigid thing of which vegetables. And also, I think you're right. People don't know. How would I cook it? I don't know yeah. how to cook that. It's funny, you know, because I did go to a shop to buy some planting recently. And um, when I got to the till, I had two big planting in my, in my, this was a shop down in Cheriton, I had a two big planting in my um, basket. I, I also, I go there to buy tofu as well. And um, the woman at the till said to me, how are you going to cook these? Because I think she was interested to see if I knew really what they were. Yeah. Because I could, of course, think that they were bananas. Yeah. And I said, oh, actually, I'm going to slice them and fry them. And she said, oh, yeah, fried plantain. That's my favorite, too. And I thought, oh, I think she's having a little test to see if I really knew what I was buying. <laughs> I love it. That's brilliant. That's good, though, that she asked because, you know, I mean, I go like today, I went, I passed the market, like the fruit and veg market. And I saw this thing that I've never seen in my life, but I'm the kind of person, I'm very inquisitive and like boldly so. Like, and I'll be like, what's that? How do you yeah. make that? Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people wouldn't. What What was it? What was I've it? No, that you saw? I've no idea because I was doing something at the time. So I didn't oh, get to okay. stop and ask. But it was like, it looked like a courgette, but like a white one. And it had like a leaf on the end. So I'm going to have, next time I go into town, I'm going to ask, because I'm it's so probably, curious. Yeah, it was probably a courgette. You can get white courgette. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was massive. They were massive. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to go back and ask, you know, yeah. when I get a chance. because And I see loads of random things all the time. This is why I love markets. You know, we're supporting our local people, like buyers, which I think is really yeah. important. But we're, I also keep seeing new stuff. So, and as yeah. you say, you can always chat to them and ask them how to cook it and so on. Exactly. But, you know, I think the other thing, Luna, about when people are thinking about becoming vegetarian, uh, vegan, is they worry, will I get the nutrition, you know, because we've all been um, socially engineered to think that we only ever get protein from meat. Yeah. And actually, it's pretty much in everything, isn't it? It's pretty much in everything, but also very richly in a lot of the legumes, a lot of the nuts, green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. They're all very protein rich. 
And to be honest, in this day and age, it's very unlikely that we're going to develop a protein deficiency. Oh, I've never met anyone with one of you. No. Never. I mean, if if honestly, if anyone would have, it probably would be me because my diet is atrocious. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's not as bad as it was, but you know, like thinking back to my child, like my teenagehood, like I, I pretty much lived on frozen potatoes, like yeah. and a bit of fruit. Like I didn't yeah. touch veg barely. So you know, I'm here, I'm alive. So I I think I'm proof that it can be done. And you don't have to worry about stuff like that. (laughs) Obviously, I don't recommend that diet, but (laughs) yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think that you're just as um, kind of vibrant and healthy, um, if not healthier, perhaps, with a a vegan or vegetarian diet than you are ordinarily eating. I don't. I don't, there is, there is a bit of a, hmm, a little bit of a cautiousness while I say that, because some people do embark on a vegan diet as a weight loss thing. Mm. And so what sometimes happens, and I read this a lot, I do a lot of lurking in vegan groups and diet groups, uh, because I have a special interest in it. And what often happens is that people go vegan to lose weight, um, but actually they they they're just under eating on the calories basically you know just restricting um and the bad thing i think you and i both know once you start restricting you'll start binging because Mm -hmm. restriction is always followed by binging um and so yeah so i think um a bit of caution about maybe your root reason for being vegan and having a varied diet you know yeah i think if you're if I'm honest, I'm vegan for the animals first, absolutely first. Well, that's but the definition, you know, of veganism. Of veganism. Yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not, I mean, it's great that people are using other means to get people to, on a plant based diet, but the definition of veganism is all about animal ethics. It isn't about health. It isn't about like diet. It isn't about all this other stuff. It is predominantly, that's, you know, that's the meaning of it. It's about animals. So it is. otherwise you're just you're having a plant based diet. I think that over the kind of hundred years or whatever, I don't know when the vegan society was first set up. Do you? Do you know what? Not off by heart. No, no. I have a feeling it might be around the early 1900s. But I think, um, you know, over that time, we've become more aware of the environmental impact of animal farming. That was the other one I was thinking of the environment. Well, I, I'm I'm a Green Party member, so, you know, I'm an environmentalist. And I, as I said earlier on, I'm very, very into nature and us being custodians of nature and how important it is to look after our um, our earthlings, yep. our, our sister and brother earthlings, the animals that we live with. Um, and my garden in particular is a wildlife garden. So everything in my garden is set up for um, bees, butterflies, birds, you know, it's a it's a little sanctuary for that. And and that's become really important to me as well, to know that um, I'm contributing to the earth in a good way. Yeah, and I definitely. think when the vegan society first started out, that wasn't an issue because they didn't have that awareness of, of ecology and environmental issues and the balance of earth and the damage that we're doing. Mm. My goodness. I don't know if you've seen the well you haven't seen the news I know in the last couple of days well only, I'm only saying that because I know you don't watch I, the I news. don't watch the news yeah just so you I, know. I, I don't watch a lot of the news but I have watched a bit which is about the terrible heat that's raging across Europe and um and Sicily had had a temperature of 45.5 45.5 oh, wow. that's halfway to boiling point oh my gosh um, and this is because of the, the, you know, the terrible imbalances in the world that we've caused. Um, so, yeah, I like to think my carbon print, carbon footprint isn't too high. I've planted about nine trees in my garden since I've lived here. I keep planting trees all the time. Love um, it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's a good reason to be vegan. I think it's a good reason to be vegan. And also, if people feel healthier that as a result of their veganism, then great. Yeah. 
The only thing that worries me about people that go vegan for health and dieting, well, you know, even if you go vegan for dieting, the end result is, you know, the animals are saved. But the only thing I think is that the sustainability isn't there. I think if you have a soul commitment to veganism in that you believe in not hurting animals and not being part of that system, I think you're more likely to sustain it as a lifelong change. Yeah, definitely. If you're going to do it to lose two stones, you'll do it, but you'll give up and you'll just go back to eating animals again, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting when you when you talk to people about eating animals and I, I don't always but I often use that term because I don't like the way that we call cows beef and pigs pork let's call you know the animal what it is people find it so uncomfortable they really don't like it so you know for as long as they can pretend that they're not eating the little piggy or the little lovely little lamb um then I, I think they can they can be in their box. But, you know, I understand that. I was like that for years. I it's interesting, like though, as well, because, like, not all meats are covered up with another word, like chicken and fish. That's exactly what it is. So it is. It's, it's very interesting that people are fine to just be like, oh, yeah, I'm eating chicken. Yeah. And obviously it's chicken and lamb as well. Like, but then they're getting these reactions to when you say, oh, it's a pig, when it's that, like pork. It's so it fascinates me it is fascinating and you know what's also fascinating is when children learn that the chicken on their plate is the chicken that lovely little bird that they see that they like they're one and the same thing mm. um my grandson is recently starting to get that awareness and i think it's quite been quite hard for him to get his head around it mm. you know? Because um, they do, they love animals, don't they? They're very, as children, children the young ones, they're very connected. Yeah, naturally love taken animals. Out. Yeah, and we know that because parents will very rarely tell their children that what they're eating is, you know, the the little animal that they've just been yeah. playing with. You know, um, they won't tell them that because they'll just pretend it's something else because they know it's really, it's an uncomfortable subject because it's true. Mm -hmm. It's like when people um, grow up on a farm, don't they? And they say never name the animals because when they, they go to slaughter, attachment. yeah, and when they go to slaughter and it's on their plate, they don't want to say, oh, it's little Daisy. It's lovely little Daisy that we've been petting for two years, you know, yep. or six months, whatever. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's it fascinating. Is. But I used to love meat. I didn't give up. I didn't give up eating meat because I didn't like it. Yeah. I gave it up ethically. It's wrong for me. For me, it's ethically, it's wrong. And, um, you know, people often say with, like you were saying earlier on, with the meat replacements and everything, people, meat eaters often say, well, I don't understand the point of eating veggie bacon or veggie sausage or whatever. And, and I always say to them, well, I do, because I used to love sausages. I used to love bacon. I used to love chicken. But now I can have it and the pig doesn't die. Yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah, I think, I think it's interesting. And the growth in that market has been incredible, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I mean, we've just seen, you and I, we did a few Veganuary events, didn't we? And we've seen in that time so many products now in the supermarkets that we can go in and buy. Yeah, and it just gets bigger and bigger. It gets bigger and bigger. In fact, I'm a bit confused because I go back and I think, oh, what were what were those burgers that I got that I liked? <laughs> or what were the burgers I got that I didn't like? I don't want to buy them again. I've forgotten which ones they are. That's why I'm another reason I'm grateful for my vegan bloomers group because yeah. I document everything I like and I'll yeah. put it in there and then I'll use like little symbols so I remember exactly what it is that I really liked. Because like burgers, for example. I used to love like meat substitute burgers, but over time I lost the taste for it, but there's still certain ones I really like, but most of them I don't. So yeah, I'm really glad that I have my group because actually it's a, it's like a itinerary for me to remember what I actually like and what I don't. That's a brilliant idea. That's really brilliant. I wish I, I wish I would do something like that for myself, but I'm not that organized. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I end up I end up ordering from Iceland or something and getting the burgers delivered and cooking them and thinking, no, these were the ones I didn't like. <laughs> I'll eat them now. There's two more in the fridge. Well, there's the always fridge. there's always time to learn for improvements, being organized. Always, always, <laughs> always time to, for growth in everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm curious to this one because I'm not sure of the answer to this one. Have you ever been involved in any vegan activism? Vegan activism, I'm not... Apart from your workshops. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the veganuary workshops were vegan activism, I suppose. Um, we did a lovely little... Do you remember that little bit of vegan activism we did when we painted the pebbles? Oh, yes, yeah. With vegan slogans. That. Yeah. And then we dropped them all around town. Yes, that was awesome. That, that was nice. The other thing I did only a couple of times was go down to the ports. You know, the ports where the animals are coming in, the live exports. Oh, yeah. um, I've been down to a couple of those protests, um, but actually they weren't for me in the end. So I stopped going. Um, but yeah, that's probably the only vegan activism that I've done. So tell us more about the ports. What was that like? So down at the down at uh, here in uh, in Dover, up the road, and in Ramsgate, there are um, live exports that go through those. In fact, they don't at Dover now. They stopped it, but they still do. Well, I'm not quite sure with COVID, but anyway, we up till recently they still do at Ramsgate. So basically, you get these huge lorries full of um, generally sheep, sometimes pigs, sometimes calves. Um, but a lot of the sheep get, um, they come from Ireland or Scotland. So they've come all that way down already. And then they go across to Europe and then sometimes they end up in some of the Muslim countries. So they'll be used for sacrifice at Eid. And uh, you know, they've come all that way, the poor things um obviously the pigs don't end up in the muslim countries but um they just suffer they suffer terribly on those journeys and so there's generally on the times when those cargoes which is what they refer to them as they're just cargo come through there's a kind of stalwart group of protesters that are there at the port and um they know that they can't stop stop it going through but what they'll do is hold up the lorries so that um, they can take photographs of the animals and check obviously they can't they have to do it through the slits in the vans um, but they can take photographs if they're injured or whatever and um, if they do find something that's really awful like you know perhaps a poor pig has died or something like that then they're able to inform the authorities and they would have to stop that lorry and obviously pull out the dead pig and so on. Um, but, you know, that trade's been going on for years and years and years and we haven't seen a stop to it yet, but, you know, that, that might happen in the future. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. It's awful, just yeah. awful. You know, and sometimes those poor, those poor lorries have gone across and there's been strikes and it's been summer and so those lorries then can't move and so that means those animals are in those it's just like being in an oven you know a yeah. hot metal thing where they're you know that the, they do have water in there but they're only in the corners of the of the rooms how do you move as an animal from one side of the lorry to the other side to get a drink yeah. it's impossible and so they end up being in these terrible we're just being kind of baked alive in these awful lorries mm. and um you know just just awful journeys and I, I can't imagine that the people that sell those animals get very much for them i'm sure we're just talking about a few pounds mm. per animal and um, um, how awful what a yeah. terrible terrible end to an animal's life so yeah absolutely yeah, so, all things well we just hope that at some point in the future it will stop yeah fingers crossed mm. 
So I know you've mentioned already a little bit of like how important it is to kind of like get to the nitty gritty of your reason for going vegan. But is there any other advice that you would recommend to anyone that's kind of thinking about it, but it's still not quite there yet? I think inform yourself. Like I said earlier, it was really only, I'll tell you actually what was a key moment for me, was reading, um, oh my God, what's her name? What's her name? The woman that's the head of um, Viva. Juliet. Something. Juliet Galatly. That's the one. Yeah, I read her book and um, it was an eye opener to me. And, uh, and, I, and I remember reading this part about um, cows, cattle being transported across in the water. And I think one of them had become ill, a bull had become ill. Of course, there's no point in, in them doing anything about that because it's money lost. And so they just chucked him over the edge to drown in the sea. Mm -hmm. And I just, oh, it just, that image stayed with me for a long, long time. And I think also I saw a little, a tiny little film about Clara, Clara the calf, um, which I watched and basically it was about Clara the calf being born and then the farmhand come in and just grabbing her by one back leg and dragging her along the floor, um, you know, to take her away from her mum. And, and I just thought, oh no, well it must, it can't, can't have been Clara, can it? Well, it was one, one cat, one cow's name. And um, I think there's been a few films that you and I have watched as well, um, which, yeah, really, really opened my eyes to so, so many different things. Like I learned about the chicks, the poor little chicks oh, that, yeah. get ground, that get ground up, or the poor little chicks that get gassed, or the, the piggies that get gassed, and all of that stuff I didn't know about. And sometimes I'll meet someone and have a conversation about veganism and they'll say, oh, you don't need to tell me, I know all about it. And I say, I doubt it because I didn't know all about it. And there's probably stuff I still don't know. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that I think I don't want to know, you know, I literally don't want to know. I feel like I know enough now. Yeah. I don't really want to know anymore. But that would be my advice is to inform yourself um, because I think the more you know, you can't undo that knowing once you know it you can't undo it you yeah. can't pretend it's not happening you can't just say oh I've decided you know that I, I won't be vegan anymore and and blot it all out I couldn't do it anyway mm. I, would, I would know that it was there you know same yeah. yeah I can't I couldn't imagine you know ever going back you know I'm vegan for life like there's no way I would ever be able to go back and I think yeah that's an important thing I mean like when I first started my veganism journey I I remember having intentions that some certain things were okay like eggs like I used to eat my mum's um eggs from her garden and when I watched the footage even though it wasn't relevant to that eggs it just put me off I was like I can't continue eating eggs anymore like and it just grosses me out like even the thought of it it, it just grosses me out like yeah, and I, for a little while, I kind of, I made myself watch documentaries. Like I've got a, li I've got a, a big list of all the documentaries because I want to be, you know, I want to be informed. And although at first I think I need, I needed that grounding to remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing, because you know, you can slip. Like it's easy to slip. Um, but by doing that. It meant I never, I never slipped. Like the only slips I've ever made are accidental. Um, yeah. You know, things like when I went gluten free for a little while, not realizing there was egg in bread, for example, like, and, and little things like that, like just not having any idea that that, or expecting that to be in a product. So, but yeah, since knowing the things I know and seeing the footage that I've seen, like that's where my brain just goes. You yeah, know, even sometimes with like fake meat, like some fake meat, I just can't, I can't even eat because it just it so vividly reminds me of what goes on. Yeah, that I just can't touch it anymore. Yeah, I know I didn't think I'd ever be like that, you know. So I, I always thought, you know, when I heard of vegans that were like, oh, I can't eat fake meat, so I never understood why, but I do understand why now. 
mm. like yeah so yeah I think it is it's definitely very powerful when you when you really know what goes on you know because I I too was like had the mind frame of yeah I know what goes on because I was vegetarian but I didn't because there was a whole other side you know with dairy like I had no idea <clears throat> and had I known I probably would have gone vegan much sooner but yeah you know I can't change the past I found out when I was meant to find out so yeah and I think that's it and I think we mustn't beat ourselves up you know and if those slips are made because you buy a product that you know unknowingly you've bought something that's got me in um I bought some sweets when I was with my grandson the other week I bought some licorice and I didn't realize because I now I check is that it had gelatin in it it had pork gelatin in it Um, and we'd already eaten some when I said oh Morgan I I don't want to eat this and I didn't say to him that because he's only five I didn't make that kind of complicated thing and I said to him I said you can have them or give them to mummy he said I'll give them to mummy Um, and then when Louise came along I explained why I didn't want them but um yeah I didn't kind of beat myself up because I'd eaten some pork gelatin in some licorice that I didn't realize yeah it's just like well you know that's just I know for next time exactly and in fact we were we were shopping weren't we you and I and I was looking at the licorice and I said now let me check because some of them have got (laughs) gelatin in (laughs) so yeah so yeah and I think also something my dad used to say which which I think is really really good advice which is that he said he used to say do your best and where you can go the extra mile I like that yeah and I think it's good advice it's good advice in going vegan you know yeah, definitely. do your best and where you can go the extra mile and and if you make those slips then don't don't have a nervous breakdown about it you know there's no point no Done. just move on yeah yeah I love that what an awesome way to end so before uh, we all say goodbye oh lovely if anybody well, it's been a pleasure yeah so if anybody would like to get in touch with you how can they reach you um the best way to reach me reach me on my business phone line actually so that's 07942906800 so you can do that and you can reach me on facebook so you can go to my business page there which is sherry bell coaching and workshops or you can join a group that i run folkestone wellbeing community um and you can have a chat with me on there we talk about all sorts of things on there so is your is that community open to anybody because it might not be you know viewers might be all around the world so is that open open to anybody anybody. so we don't even though it's called Folkestone Wellbeing Community yeah we have people from all over oh fabulous brilliant Mm -hmm. well thank you so much for letting me interview again it's been wonderful talking to you you know I've you know I've learned new things too so I have you I have yeah Well, we know each other quite well, so yes. I'm surprised about that. And I'm always learning new things. Like my first person I interviewed, my friend Andy, I've known him since I was like 12. And yep. I had no idea about his vegan story. Like, I oh, really? Know. Yep. I learned so much. And, you know, Amazing. it just goes to show. I'm just distracted. Have you got a friend staying with you at the minute? Yeah, my cat dribbles. Oh. Let, let, let me get her because she just come up to me. She keeps... She keeps claw- clawing my leg. Oh, she's like, hello, oh, darling. Really? Hello, beautiful. Aren't you lovely? Oh, <laughs> that's nice. So that's Dribbles. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> well, thank you ever so much. It's been thank lovely, to, lovely to have a chat. Yes, it has. And thank, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you've learned some new things as well and hopefully have been inspired to take yeah. that next step. Yeah. If, if you are vegan yourself and you'd like to be our next star vegan please do get in touch with me you can find me on facebook luna bloomer or you can email me on veganbloomers at gmail.com and bye-bye everybody much love bye